uh, capacitors, this has, uh, it's the most component that always goes bad. If the motor is not running at the right RPM, that means the run capacitor is bad. If the motor does not start or starts start very slow, then you have to give it a, a push. Who was that? I think John. His motor was like a, was a cut wire for the capacitor, so there's no capacitor. Once he pushed it, it moved. That means that the, uh, the run capacitor is bad. Take out the capacitor, make sure it's wired correctly, and make sure the capacitor has the right uh, microfarads in it. Split phase motor, we talked about split phase, this is split phase motor. Uh, it has resistance start induction run motor, and capacitor start induction run motor, two types of uh, split phase. The split phase, what it does is it will change the current, take a, a branch from the current and use it to start the motor. So it has two windings inside. Uh, there are different methods to do a second phase. The whole idea is if you don't see a, if you don't see a capacitor, I mean the split phase, and sometimes you see a capacitor, which also runs its own uh, winding. So the capacitor has a charge, and the charge is connected to a winding, and that winding will push the motor out of phase so it will run. Resistance start, induction run motors, they have a starting and running winding. Uh, what does that mean? So we have two winding inside the, the housing. One winding will start it, yeah? You went over this already, right? Yeah. Yeah. But most of the, most of the, uh, most have some method of beginning the rotation, usually a capacitor or a winding. Uh, phase are split by makeup of starting and winding. Usually, the problem will be either winding is burnt, or bearing, or centrifugal switch. This is an example. An inter is dark winding, but winding is burnt, and that's the start of winding, and probably it's going to keep the motor from running uh, in the beginning. Capacitor start, induction run motor. So you see a lot of names. I don't want you to worry about all those names and all those categories, as long as you know if there's a capacitor, if there's one capacitor, you get a no, it's a start capacitor. There are two capacitors. Probably you have run capacitor and a start capacitor. If there is no capacitor, it's either a shaded pole or a split phase winding. Uh, those they stack high. They have a high starting torque. They need for many applications. They operate just like split phase motor, except the capacitor is outside, and it activates a run a start uh, winding and it has a centrifugal switch. Uh, they can either open and close, enclosed, or it's open. Open means it's outside. Enclosed, it's hermetic, it's completely sealed. And the reason for sealed, if has, uh, for sealed motor is what? Usually it's uh, for ACs because refrigerant is flammable. That's the main reason we have hermetic compressors. We want to isolate the refrigerant from the motor. Terminal split capacitor motor, again, different names, same idea, different configuration. Simple to the design, monitor starting torque is not very strong. Uh, running capacitor is put in series with the starting winding. Usually, trouble free over a long time, bearing winding capacitors. So, this list the most thing that we'll see everywhere, and it will repeat itself over and over again. Problems with motors. See a capacitor, test the capacitor, make sure it has the right farads and it has proper connection. Bearing. Centrification. Check for smooth and free rotation by hand. It should move freely if it's a little bit tough. It could be the bearing, and it could be what else? The, uh, the 
clearance. Sometimes it will be too tight and it could be touching something. So check for smooth uh, rotation. Check for noise. What else do we have? Yeah, yeah. You'll see some pieces outside. Uh, then check. So you have to open up the motor. If you if it's too fast from the outside, open the motor. Check for color. Very smell. Internal. Wiring. If you look at this uh, motor, it has a centrifugal switch and it has a thermal, heat, a thermal protection switch. If these wiring are, are not connected properly, probably it will not work. Question? Yeah. Yeah. Did we have the capacitor yet? Yeah. We read the multimeter, we did the capacitor. What else can go wrong with the motor? I, I will say these are the first three cobalt things. If it's something go goes wrong, if the motor is not run, if you just set all these things, just switch the motor and see if it runs or not. Uh, again, it could be not the motor, it could be the pump. Whatever is connected to the motor is seized. Take the motor by itself, test it, make sure it's fine, then put it back again and look at the, uh, look at the connection. Uh, the user goes bad, right? The pump? The pump. Switch. Sometimes the, the screw cage fan is uh, stuck, it's rough. Sometimes the bearing goes bad. So check the bearing. I'll put this here. I mean coupling, sorry. The coupling for most oil bearings made out of plastic for a reason. The reason they make it out of plastic, so if it exceed if the torque exceed the safety amount, it will shred as a safety measure. That's the, that's why they make it made out of uh, plastic. It's very thin and it's measured so it's kind of diffuse. If something goes wrong, it will shred, so it will protect your pump and it will protect your burner. So not sure it's cheap. No, they want it to be very, very fragile. So it will connect with the right torque. If you exceed it, the motor goes haywire, this will shred and protect your instrument. If you see a shredded uh, coupling, just make sure you investigate the motor, check the RPM, check the amperage, and check your pump. Something went wrong, that's why the bearing has shredded. Uh, capacitor start, a capacitor run. These are some of the characteristics. They produce high side torque and have better running efficiency. So some motors, they come with two big capacitors on the outside, one for the starting and one for the running. Uh, they begin on phase displacement between starting and running winding, same thing. Sometimes it's difficult to diagnose this uh, start capacitor start, start run because it has a small kind of computer in it. But what you can do is do the same check and move on. You're not going to be an electrician, you're not going to be fixing motors, but you want to know that this motor is bad or good, and we can change it. If you look at this wire, for example, the wires are very shredded and old, you can choose to change the wiring, or you can change the motor. This uh, motor probably has been running for at least 10 years. So it's a lot. Three-phase motor, uh, they don't have capacitor. Uh, I think they're they Yeah. Question? When we're doing like that, Yeah, you can put some more. You don't replace bearing. Bearing here are very uh, press fit. Has to go to a, a machine shop to be changed. The motors are not that expensive, $150, $100. And you also they give you money for the core, so make sure you replace that. Uh, three phase, they're very rugged, reliable, more dependable. Uh, they have plenty of power to go around. Uh, three currents running in the same, simultaneously, and no capacitors required. 
but you're not going to see these in residential. This is mostly industrial or commercial. What, what, what do I mean by commercial? Probably if you have uh, an apartment building, you will have a few days of life to it. Squirrel cage induction type, but uh, by squirrel cage, they mean the rotor itself doesn't look like that. It has a squirrel cage, which means it puts similar to this with a lot of windings going back and forth with the three phase. Uh, what you can do is check the resistance for the primary winding. So you go and check between the phases, check the winding, and check the resistance between them. If you find zero, that means one of the phases is gone, or like the winding is gone. It cannot run with two phases. If one phase is running, it's going to run smoothly. So it will give you, it will spin, but it's not going to be the proper RPM. So you change for the, you check for the resistance, or you can check using continuity. So continuity is going to be one of your best friends. Check components, if they are connected or not, or you can check for resistance. Uh, electronically commutated motors, they're very expensive. However, they are very common, and they're getting more popularity because you can change the speed, and you can change the power, and you can change the rotation without even touching the motor. So they, they, are, they are on the high end. Usually you see them in damper motors, um, I mean uh, in uh, inducer fans, because you want to change the speed of the fan, high, low, medium, or you can change the, the rotation as well to reverse the rotation. Uh, we're not gonna talk about the, the construction. At least you know how to, how to verify it. Uh, usually, I'll show you a video. Usually, they come with a small control. They're large size. They don't, they don't come small. And uh, again, there are no capacitors most of the time. So if they go bad, you have to change the, the control for it, or you can change the entire motor. The motor doesn't go bad in these cases. It's all mostly the control. And usually, the control comes as a chip. You can change it and replace. I don't want to go into the details of the motors because, again, we're not going to be fixing motors. I, I just want to know the basic ways to troubleshoot the motors. The many compressors, again, they are inside the mo uh, cylinder, usually black cylinder, welded. They're supposed to access it. Uh, even the wire coming out has a seal in it, so you don't get any gas exchange. And the reason behind that is because it has, the refrigerant is very flammable again. You don't want the spark to go in and out. And also it protects the motor from the element. There's no moisture coming in, there's no humidity, and that's why the warranty on a compressor is usually around 10 years. So the compressor has, has already been tested, and it's uh, supposed to run for at least 10 years nonstop. stop Non-stop? I don't know. I think it's on stop on this. Sitting on three-phase current can be uh, either enclosed in a shell with the, with the refrigerant and oil. It requires special consideration. Never try to open the, the shell. Uh, if it has a capacitor, probably you see the capacitor from the outside. If there is no capacitor, probably it's a shaded pole. So do not try to get into it. But you, how do you test it then? You can test for continuity, you can test for resistance, and you can test for the amperage draw. How do you test for amperage draw again? You will start it together. Huh? No. How do I test for amperage? Oh, amperage draw. You clip it on on one wire, either the hot or the neutral, and turn it on. And check for how many amps it draws. Usually it will say on it. Please remember this. It's, it's the best way to test an uh, equipment for uh, proper function. Uh, you can also check for uh, the capacitor connections. Many of those packaged uh, ACs, you will see that the capacitor is not uh, connected properly. So, you will look at the capacitor wires and <coughs> compare to the schematics and make sure the capacitor is connected to the proper terminal. <coughs> so this is the, some, of the some of the problems you run into when you go with the motor issue. Usually, it's going to be pre-season startup, especially for ACs. The AC has been shut off for the whole winter, uh, subject to a lot of snow, maybe some salt, Maybe some moisture, freezing. Uh, so you try to turn the AC in June and it's not working. 
most likely it's going to be the capacitor, most likely something got into the motor, and you have to go and check the capacitor and check your motor. So it's always going to be a pre-season issue. Same thing with the, with the oil burner. You try to turn your oil burner in the winter, and it's not uh, turning. Could be the motor is seized, could be the pump has collected a lot of dirt in it, so it's really hard to turn. So starting from the beginning is always going to be an issue, yeah. Couldn't it also be older units, even newer ones, three hours of big gap? Possible, possible. If there's no, but uh, it will still hump. You'll still get some kind of rotation. But if the, if the compressor is running out of refrigerant, probably it leaked out, and it's not going to turn. And in that case, what would you see? You go to put your clip on later, and you see a lot high average draw because it's called the locked amperage. If you look at a lot of uh, motors, they have two types of amperage. Something called lock drawer of amperage, I don't have it here, but here, throw compressor, will give you the lock drawer of amperage, and the running amperage. So the running, uh, for example, will be two, and the lock will be like six or eight. I mean, it's locked, the motor is running, but it's locked. So turn it off and go and check the component inside. Uh, preventive maintenance calls, uh, a lot of times things have to be changed in the motor. Some motors are required to be lubricated. Some motors that are placed outside has a filter. You have to change the mesh filter. And uh, sometimes for large motors, you have to change the bearing every three or four years. Uh, or could be this is completely not operating. Inducer fans, very common to break. Uh, when you replace parts, please try to replace parts with a valid warranty and ask as Bill always says, ask the hardware place what is the better component? How, what is the service call of these components? What is the history of these components? Sometimes they you can buy a camera for 30 bucks, but they know it's, these things always go bad and they get on return. So always check with your colleagues for the be better replacement. Uh, for some, for at, at some point, everybody was into uh, electronic igniters but after a while, people went back to transformers because of failure. And every time a component fails, you have to go back and drive all the way to God knows where and replace that. You put it in, and it failed. Uh, some stuff you buy, you buy that they really do not work. So uh, there is no way for you to test it in the field. That's why they give you warranty and they're replacing. But again, your labor is included. So if you go to a, to a house and you replace the component and it doesn't work, Who's gonna pay for your time? It's not the customer, it's going to be you. So make sure you get some reliable components and something that's already been tested. Uh, again, there is a big price difference. You can get a, a motor made in China for 30 bucks, or you, get, you can get something better quality for $150. So there's a big price change, big price difference, but uh, there's a reason why it's why more expensive. Huh? But you're gonna go in the street and check it again. You're gonna you gonna chance it. Same thing with car parts. You buy car parts, you can buy something for like a thousand dollars, and something for two hundred dollars. So it depends. You have to make a sound judgment. Is it? Uh, I personally believe if you're going to buy a mechanical part in your car, go with the manufacturer part. Like if the if the part is going to be operable, like uh, rotors, axles all these kind of parts that actually have a lot of functions, a lot of mechanical power on it, go with the manufacturer uh, parts. Why? They are tested properly and they guarantee it will work properly. Uh, some, some parts you can, you, can, you can skip on, like brake pads, there's a lot of manufacturers who brake, brake pads with, with good warranties. Accessories, not that important, like uh, wipers, you can, get, you, can get, you can get away with not having the, the proper parts. But if you're going to buy some metallic parts that don't support a lot of weight, uh, you want to go with the manufacturer uh, part. Even though it, sometimes it's four times the price. They look the same, but the manufacturing is different, the testing is different, and that's where the money goes. So that's something you want to always keep in mind. That's why also if you have a car under warranty, they have to replace everything with manufacturer parts. Uh, it might seem like extravagant to get the part that's cost a lot of money, but again, if this is load bearing, component, it's a safety issue, you do not want to skim. I learned the hard way. I changed an axle on a car, I, I skimmed and I got the, the cheaper one two months later. The thing broke. Luckily it broke in a, while I was turning. Uh, and, yeah, and the tire went out. So imagine if I wasn't a highway. 
that would have been a major accident. So again, these things, you, you never know when they're gonna break and what kind of testing they put it under. I saw someone drop a drive shaft on 90. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if, you, if you see the amount of testing they put into it, it's really, it's really uh, wrong. They test the material, they go through a lot of quality control, and even though they look the same, they're not the same. Yeah, so don't say about these things. China is known for that. Huh? China is known for that. Uh, and again, even Chinese products, they come in grades. Yeah. Even Chinese, just because it's made in China means bad. They come in grades. You can find something made in China for like $800 or something for $100. Mm -hmm. It depends on the quality. They give you whatever quality you want. You want zero quality, you want 100 quality, we'll give it to you. Yeah. So always like, uh, make sure you get the right parts. Uh, I'll talk about the next uh, lecture quickly, because we're falling behind. It's uh, basically the same stuff, but we'll talk more about the components. How it goes into this. How do you check a capacitor? It's a small, simple equation you can do to check the capacitor. Uh, let's say, let's say you know what is the capacity for this capacitor. You go to a, an old AC, there is no information on it. You want to know what is the macrofarad of this capacitor. You can measure the average, you apply voltage to the, so you, you clip on two wires into the capacitor. You measure how much amperage you're drawing while you're charging the capacitor, and uh, the voltage is going to be 110. Whatever your amperage drew, you multiply that by 2,650, and that will give you a microfarads. I'm not gonna ask you this question, but if one day, you are in doubt and you want to know what is the capacitor for something that doesn't have any, any components in it, uh, you can measure it this way. Again, when you charge the capacitor, you have to watch the amperage. When I, did, when I taught the refrigeration course, when you try to charge the capacitor, you clip on your uh, ammeter on it, you charge it, you see the amperage draw increase. Once it's constant, you stop. If you don't stop, what will happen? It will blow. It will blow. So it will start drawing amperage. If you're in a little bit steady, take it out. And that's your amperage. Uh, so a replacement for static capacitor has to be equal or up to 20% of the capacitor signal. That's a question so that don't in the quiz. So if you want to do a replacement, if you can't get the right capacitor, you can go up to 20% of the capacitor signal. That's for static capacitor. Plus or minus 20%, that will do it. For running capacitor, plus or minus 10%. So 10% for running capacitor, 20% for style capacitor. Write this down, it's going to be in the quiz. Motor speed, we did that already. Hertz and voltage over the number of poles. Are you going to tell us write it down? Yo, I just said that. Write it down. <laughs> or take a picture. Or look at the blackboard. It's there. Or that. <laughs> Got it? No. no. I'm just going to take pictures. Hey. Speedy with the speedy. Speedy with the speedy. Speedy with the speedy. Got it? Do you even look at the pictures? A lot of times I find myself taking pictures I never look at. 20% plus or minus. For star capacitor, for running capacitor, 10% plus or minus. We did that already in the quiz and the homework. You have to iterate, reiterate, <coughs> hertz, times both of you, the number of poles will give you the RPM. <laughs> and why, why would you need that? Go on a massive motor, an old motor, or get the, something similar. Again, motors last for a long time. Probably gonna go find a motor that has been there for like 30 years. It's been rusty from the outside, there's no name plate. This is one way to find the motor speed. So, we'll talk about the starting relays. That is something you will see in compressors. Starting components for single phase, hermetic compressors. That's 
going to be very helpful when doing Bill's class. I'm doing his uh, class. Now we need to look at what, look at uh, sign relay. Select the correct potential relay for an application with information available on the potential relay. Has anybody seen a potential relay? I'll try a picture. It looks like a like a small little magnetic box or like a small black box from the outside, which is just a, a potential relay. What it does is it acts like a centrifugal switch. It will measure the amperage, and based on the amperage, it will cut out a circuit, which is used for the starting winding. Troubleshoot and install motor starting relay on the magnetic compressor motor. So most of the stuff will will pertain to air conditioner systems and compressors. Uh, potential relays are used a lot for hermetics and compressors because, again, we don't want to use capacitors because capacitors have the potential of, producing, of uh, producing a spark and you don't want to have a spark where you have refrigerant. By the way, feel free to slow me down if I'm going too fast. That's not hard. I'll try. Try to slow you down. Be vocal. <laughs> my, my default speed is very fast, so slow me down. I'll slow down. Yeah. Identify the type of motor drive using the industrial application. Uh, we have two drives for, a, for a, a motor. Can somebody just guess what they are? What was that, sir? Two drives. And the motor has uh, two types of drives. One of them is direct drive, which the RPM of the motor will be equal to the RPM of the pump. And we have indirect drive, which could be either gear or a belt. You understand? I will do a small picture. So if we have a motor here, connected to a pump. So this is dive drive. If you have a motor, Is the purpose of indirect drive? Uh, it changes the RPM. It changes the RPM to either higher or lower based on the pulley. So those are the two types we have, and you'll you'll have both. For inducer fans, motor probably a lot of times you have indirect drive, and for pumps you'll have direct drive, and it's a way for you to change the RPM of the motor. Uh, I'll give you a simple equation how to calculate the variables for the V-built. What's a V-built? It's the belt that connects the direct drive, the, the pulley of the fan to the pulley of the motor. And as you have guessed, it's a ratio that has to do with the size of the pulley. Uh, recognize and adjust the V-built on the kitchen to proper tension and alignment. Does anybody has to check the tension of the car belt? Yeah. How, what is the general rule for belt tension? Yeah. It's quarter inch. And a lot of people just go by turning off the belt and pushing against it. It should not be too tight, it should be pretty pushed, but not a lot. Like around half an inch, quarter inch, that's fine. If it's too loose, it will squeal. And it will have a slip. So you want, you want to be tight, but not too tight. And sometimes a manufacturer have a tensioner that will you press against the belt and see what is the belt tension. They want a specific tension. If you go into industrial application, probably you have to do a lot of those specific uh, measurements. Otherwise, mm -hmm. for uh, for residential stuff, it's not that that uh, critical. Uh, single phase hermetic motor. That's the most common one that you will see for most air conditioners. Usually they require external starting component, either a potential relay or a capacitor. Uh, they are enclosed in a sealed case. Uh, I'll show, I think the book has a picture, I'll show some pictures. 
starting relay is used because there is a startup winding inside the motor and the starting relay will engage that starting motor and based on the speed, the starting relay will shut off the motor. Uh, it has current, there's current and there's tension of the installed state. We'll talk about three of those components. So how would you think that the current relay will shut off the circuit? What is the current, what is the relay has? What are the components of a relay? Um, is that the magnet? Yeah, which, what is the magnet thereof? Uh, okay, relay. Coil. Coil. So there's a coil and the relay. That coil makes a magnet. That magnet gets stronger if you draw more current through it. You agree? Yeah. yeah. So that coil is designated or designed to run through some, some amount of current. If this current gets too strong, it will pull in a switch. Yeah, simple as that. Uh, potential relay also work with resistance. It's the same, it does the same job, but the resistance will change based on the current going through it. Cold <coughs> state, it's chemical, again, and as you run current through it, at some certain amount of current, it will shut off. So they are, they are, three of them do the same job based on the current running through the motor. And why is that? Because the amount of current going through the motor dictate how much electromagnetic force is in it and how much it will spin. How much it will spin. Questions? If you just know the basics, that will take you really far. You don't have to know all the intricates of the motors or electronics. <coughs> Barry, they are very important because they promote very smooth and uh, normal operation. Should not be hearing it. Uh, the bearing carries the weight of the rotor, which is usually very heavy. So if we have a lot of friction uh, caused by the weight of the rotor, that will cause a lot of heat, and heat will eventually pull in the motor. Uh, I'll stop here and finish the rest on Friday. So this Friday we have no quiz. The quiz is going to be next Friday, quiz six. And it's going to be about, about motors and motors components. And the last week, the week after, I will make uh, extra credit quiz.